Thank you. That was a, one second. That was a Horace Silver composition called Sister Sadie. Uh, my name is Will Lyle, if you don't know me. Thank you all who are here who come to see me. I got, the, I got people actually from my Little League baseball team who are here. <laughs> this, is my, this is my hometown of Newport Beach, California. So I feel very at home here. Please give it up for Tim Ellis, the curator, manager. Campus Jacks, please give it up for Golden Running Sound. And to my amazing band, uh, I would like to introduce you to the trio that I play with on the regular, who's also on my album, LA Source Codes. This is the release show for LA Source Codes, so please welcome, thank you, please welcome the great John Mayer on piano. John was an alumnus of uh, the great John Coltrane's band and Jackie McLean's band and many others, and uh, we call him the original and the best, John Mayer. So <laughs> thank you for being here. And so uh, a little while ago, I was talking to John about horn players, and I'm like, man, who should we get on saxophone? I called Bob Shepard, who's originally on the record, and he, he was coming off of a plane, so uh, he, you know, and, and I, I hadn't been in L.A. for a few months, and John goes, oh, I know this great young tenor player. His name is Brandon Wilkins. And it's really funny because Brandon and I went to Berkeley together. We, went, we, were, co we were college colleagues. So give it up, please, fellow SoCal native. And I'm like, Brandon, we got to get Brandon. So thanks for being here, man. Appreciate you. And then finally, uh, this man needs no introduction uh, because he is such a legend and we're so blessed to have him here. Uh, he's played with them all. He was an, an alumnus of Cannonball Adderley's band for many years. And he's a fixture here in SoCal, local legend, and also tours all around the world still. And uh, you know, he's such an inspiration to me because <laughs> he's old enough to be my granddad, but he wakes up earlier than me every morning. He works out, and it's just like, man, like, I have no excuses. And so, uh, what a force of nature and an amazing drummer. Please give it up for Mr. Roy McCurdy on the drums. <laughs> man, 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 oh, man. So, we're going to do a tune now off of my album, L.A. Source Codes. Uh, and this is called Number One Green Street. This is by the guitarist Grant Green. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'm just going to move this. That was number one Green Street off my record, LA Source Codes, by the guitar player Grant Green. This is a this is an original tune of mine that I wrote living in New York. So I'm uh, for the uh, for, again for those who don't know, I'm originally from SoCal, but I moved to New York in uh, September of last year, and it's been quite the experience. A little more on that later, but I wrote this tune because I've been playing. Uh, a good friend of mine is is a a protege, if you will, of a famous saxophone player named Vincent Herring, who was on the road for many years with the great trumpet player Freddie Hubbard and just tons of other people, you know. And uh, and he lives up in New York, so we got the chance to play at his house a few times, and he's, you know, driven me home and stuff and made, made dinner for me. So I wrote a tune dedicated to him called Red Herring. And it, uh, the Red Herring is an expression that's kind of like a clue in a mystery that's supposed to throw you off, so... Originally, I kind of wrote it to make fun of him a little bit, but then uh, hopefully it makes it into his repertoire. So this is called Red Herring.
Thank you. My original tune, Red Herring. Okay, so I would like to play. Uh, I would like to uh, play some solo bass for you now. So my, uh, you guys. Give it up for these amazing musicians, please. They helped me out. They really did me a solid by making it out to this gig, so. All right, so we have a little bit of stalling time. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Um, so I live in New York City. I live actually right off of the A train. The, the, the a, uh, Take the A train is a famous uh, jazz tune by the great Duke Ellington. And it's funny because I live right off the A train. So I live off the A train where Duke used to live off of. Billy Strayhorn actually wrote the tune uh, to honor Duke Ellington and uh, because he, that's how he would go to get to Duke's house up in Harlem is he'd take the A train. And, uh, you know, uh, Lawrence Welk, a very famous musical director back in the 70s and 80s, his joke was take a train. So instead of take the A train, <laughs> Say, so, okay, take a train. When he was wanted to announce his band, take the A train. Never do that joke again, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, New Yorkers are interesting. You know, you go to you go to downtown Manhattan and you see a bunch of Dodgers hats. And then in downtown LA you see Yankees hats. But but uh there's really a lot of national, uh, I mean a lot of uh, city pride in New York. I went on a date. I met a. I met a. You know, we, I use the online dating app sometimes, and I went on a date with. I never heard her talk before. We only talked over text, and we we met up at a diner. You know, just to say hi and whatever. And the second she opened her mouth, she's had the biggest New York accent. It was quite a like. It really threw me off. <laughs> she she sounded like uh, she sounded like Snooky from Jersey Shore. <laughs> And Cardi B. But it's okay. We had a good time. And it was just funny because it's like, if you're from New York, you'd have the accent, you know. Uh, anyway, so this is a tune, uh, speaking of dates, this is a, a great ballad by Duke Ellington called Prelude to a Kiss. And, you know, I'm almost, I'm almost done talking. Uh, I, uh, I have a Duke Ellington class this semester. And my teacher is a, an encyclopedia about Duke Ellington. Like, he really knows everything there is to know about Duke. So, um, this is a great Duke composition called Prelude to a Kiss. Thank you. 
Thank you. Prelude to a kiss. Okay, I'd like to invite uh, my saxophone player, Brandon Wilkins, back up to the stage. I'm about to do a duet. Okay, uh, so back in the 40s, there was a great tenor saxophone player named Don Bias, who really, uh, if, anybody, if anybody's a jazz fan in here, Don Bias is like one of the most underrated saxophone players. And you know, if you, if you examine what he was actually playing in those days, it sounds like it could have been played today. It was just like so ahead of its time, but always melodically sound and very you know, tasteful and artful. And they, uh, he made a, a series of duo recordings with, um, with the bassist Slam Stewart. So we're about to pay a tribute to that with the great Richard Rogers classic called Lover.
Thank you. Love her. It's a little after Valentine's Day, but you know. That's Richard Rogers. Thank you. Okay, I would like to invite the band back up to the stage, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Ricurdy. Thank you, Brandon. That was killing, man. <laughs> Woo! That's what we call New York tempo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we got, okay, so now we're going to do a tune made famous. Is it Lanza or Landa? Oh, but you, but you know it, right? Like, we'll just do it and see, but, because he, he has, yeah, he has your extra. You got the extra, you got the one in C. Okay, this is Mar uh, made famous by Mario Lanza. This is written by Nicholas Brodsky and Sammy Khan. And Sammy Khan. And this is also a track off my album. You know, you know the, the, there are so many different ways of playing jazz. And John and Roy's generation just have this elegance when it comes to swinging. It's elegant. It's like a, it's like a nice, it's like a finely aged scotch, you know. Seriously, or like a nice wine, or you know, it's and and it's, it takes it takes years it takes years of being of playing the music and and being in it and living the lifestyle to to in my in my opinion anyway to to play it to play that way that authentically, and uh, so I wanted some of that on my album even though I'm nowhere near that <laughs> but uh, I wanted some of that on my album and so I I I uh, did a tune that John hasn't recorded a lot but he had a beautiful version of. So we decided on this tune. This is, I believe, track number five or six on LA Source Codes. It's just a trio with us, but uh, anyway, this is Be My Love. Thank you. 
Thank you. Be my love. All right, so this next tune is a tune from the musical Porgy and Bess. Now, back in the days, that's how songs got popular. Now we have Spotify and we have YouTube streams, Instagram likes. You could pay for bots to give you 20,000 followers. But back in those days, <laughs> back in those days, you know, songs. Uh, Songs got popular through being uh, featured in musicals. And so this is a tune called It Ain't Necessarily So by George and Ira Gershwin. And, uh, you know, I really love the musical. If you, if you get a chance to watch it, there are a couple really good versions online. And so this tune is, is um, 
sung by a character in the in the musical called Sport and Life. And Sport and Life is kind of this like, you know, kind of like a low life, you know, kind of hustler, but got a great personality and the lyrics, I won't sing the lyrics because they're kind of sacrilegious. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, if you look up the lyrics, they're pretty brilliant. And so we're, we're about to do this arrangement for you called It Ain't Necessarily So. Thank you. 
Thank you. It ain't necessarily the so. Because it, it, it ain't necessarily so. And, um, you know, the, one of the reasons I love the Gershwin brothers is that, you know, not every Broadway composer did this, but the Gershwin brothers really knew a thing or two. And they would go to the South and they would listen to sharecroppers sing their melodies while they were working. And that's how they got the inspiration. That was one of the many ways that they got their inspiration for all the amazing songs and music that they wrote. And so, you know, the, that, the, the inherent DNA, the roots of American music, the blues, they were always present in the Gershwin tunes. So that's one of the reasons I love doing that tune. And uh, so we're going to move along here. Um, I got the privilege, I had the privilege of the past year and a half getting to study with the most recorded jazz bassist of all time. Uh, that's a pretty big, I, I was, you know, got, just got really lucky. And this uh, man is named Maestro Ron Carter. So I studied with him for the past uh, year and a half at Manhattan School of Music. And he's just been, uh, he's been amazing. You know, what, during the auditions, he, he told me to say hi to Roy. <laughs> so he's like, tell, uh, t Mr. Lyle, tell Mr. McCurdy I said hi. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was just kind of a funny moment there. And uh, he has an, an amazing, uh, he has two amazing bands that he tours the world with still in his 80s. And uh, one of them is a quartet and the other one is a trio. And this, is, this tune is uh, done by both groups. And this is called Samba G Orfeu. Uh, and this is also released as Sweet Happy Life. Uh, Peggy Lee did a version of this song that totally isn't as good. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I know, she, she, she does a good job. But it's just like, it gets like the 60s lounge treatment, you know. I had to play that on many a gig. So I like the I like the original more. So this is called Samba Giorfeu. If there's one thing I took from my bass lessons is to tune every half hour. <laughs> Maestro has insisted on tuning every half hour. And what's, you know, I believe, I think certain people of a certain artistic temperament have uh, varying, you know, some days they, they, you know, some days they're very encouraging and then other days they'll tell you you have absolutely no future in this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> It, but 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 one of the things I love about him is he plays. A, if you play an etude really well for him, he'll play a clapping sound effect on his phone. So you'll, you, Mr. Lyle, good job. And it's like you know that makes you feel good. Uh, so here's some of your food. Thank you. 
Thank you, Samba Jorafeu. I'm having such a good time. I want. Okay, cool, cool. We have we have room for a couple more. Great. Yeah, that was also that was not only for my teacher, Maestro Carter. But that was also for my dad, because my dad loves Brazilian music. He loves samba, and he's always bugging me on gigs. He's like, "Why don't you play any show beam?" It's like, I don't want to play Girl from Ipanema. I had the actually, I had, I had the idea of playing it, but, um, you know. Yeah, there's, there, there are more tunes than just that one. Okay, so uh, we would like to do, we would like to, you know, maybe, we would like to do something a little more up now. We're going to do a tune by the, by the very underrated great pianist Duke Pearson called Janine. Do you have it on there? You got it? Do you want to do it in G minor? Okay, do it G minor. Can you play it in G minor? I'm not very good at playing chord changes. Okay. Uh, all right, we might do something else. <laughs> okay, okay, no, we got it, we got it. Okay. We're, all, we're all educated musicians. Um, no, it's all good. No, it's no. Come on, it's, this we're having a good time. Uh, so this is Janine by the great Duke Pearson. Duke Pearson wrote some interesting tunes. You know, if you go to a, a, a New York jam session, a lot of his tunes are played, and <laughs> I learned quickly because in New York they play them. They don't play them anywhere else in the world, and uh, so it's pretty scary. As you know, <laughs> walking in, you don't know what the song is. But this is a tune that's a little more familiar. This is called Janine.
Thank you. We, I, 
I, we got it. Janine. Okay, um, we have one more tune for you this evening. Thank you for being such a magnificent audience. And uh, many of you for staying, you know, thank you all for staying. Uh, I, have a couple, I have a lot of very special people here. I got my dad and my stepmom, Lori. Please give them a round of applause. I got uh, Coach George here from Little League and his son, Grant. Please give a round of applause. Uh, I got the Quan family and Miss Kelly, the Quans and the Greens. They're like my surrogate family. Anytime I get mad at my regular family, I go hang out with them. They have me over for New Year's every year if I don't have a gig. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, and my publicist and radio promoter, Mr. Ben Schultz, is here with his girlfriend, Shayna. They, they, helped, um, they helped with all the uh, promotion of the CD. They got it on hundreds of radio stations across the country. So, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. And they really, really outdid themselves, and so I'm so happy that they made it down. And Ben actually came and listened to me in New York, so he really is a great dude. And uh, I got a lot of other great musicians in the house tonight. Uh, and I want to thank you all one more time for being here. So please give it up for the great John Mayer on piano. <laughs> My buddy, the great Brandon Wilkins on tenor saxophone. And the dominator, Mr. Roy McCurdy on the drums. Thank you, Roy. My name is Will Lyle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here.
Thank you. That was the Sonny Rollins classic, Oleo. Thank you very much. Please give it up again for my band. Thank you for listening. We have CDs on sale for $20 each. This is Newport, Newport Beach prices. It's very, uh, it's very helpful if you support the musicians. You buy the physical copy. You take, take the music home. You put, if you still have a CD player, hopefully most car, uh, my car doesn't even have a CD player. Uh, but it's, no, it's really, it's really, I'm very proud of the record and, uh, you know, very proud of the musicians on it. And we hope you can support us. Um, it will go to the band, not just me. I'm splitting the proceeds. So all the more reason for you to buy a copy. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Get home safe. And take care. Thank you for supporting live music. I don't buy sugar. You just have to touch my cup. You're my sugar hooker. Oh, baby, it's so sweet when you stir it up. Oh, when I'm taking sips from your tasty lips, seems the honey there fairly drips. Your confection goodness knows. You're my honeysuckle rosy.